This video is a thought experiment in how the universe really works, and where gravity actually comes from. At the end, I'll give you an awesome mind-bending thought that might even keep you awake at night. It doesn't make any difference how beautiful your guess is, it doesn't make any difference how smart you are who made the guess, or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. If you ask a cosmologist or astrophysicist what gravity is, you will be told that it's a force created by the mass of an object causing space-time to curve, according to Einstein's theory of general relativity. They may also explain the analogy where the weight of a heavy bowling ball distorts a large rubber sheet when placed in the middle, and the ball orbits the bowling ball when it's spun around inside the indentation, or gravity well. It may appear that the vertical axis in that two-dimensional analogy is the action of gravity, causing the bowling ball to distort the rubber sheet. But you can't use gravity in an analogy to show how it acts on a mass to distort space-time that then results in gravity. So, you could then go a step further and ask, if gravity is the effect of curved space-time and not the cause, why does matter create the curvature in the first place? If you ask the astrophysicist that question, you will be told that nobody knows. Why does matter and energy curve space and time? Okay, that's a frontier. We're still working on that. Now, imagine our universe being one of many other universes, sometimes referred to as bubbles, all existing together in a vast region of space, often referred to as the multiverse. Those other universe bubbles could be different to our universe, because the physical laws of nature could be slightly different to ours, resulting in different ways that matter in each universe behaves. There can only be a limited number of variations in the physical laws that can sustain a viable universe. Laws that go beyond those limits can't support a viable universe, and those universe bubbles cannot exist in the multiverse, and so immediately burst. Now imagine all those universe bubbles existing together in the multiverse, such that they resemble the different elementary particles in our universe. Imagine those universes coming together in the multiverse to create atoms, elements, and molecules, making structures and maybe even creating life, which could be similar to our universe, but on the next universe level up. Time could be traveling at a vastly different rate in the higher universe than in our universe. A beam of light could cross our universe bubble in the same time it takes light to cross an elementary particle in our universe. The time frame multiplication factor could be equivalent to the number of elementary sized particles that would stretch across our universe bubble from side to side. This difference in the two time frames creates a boundary between our universe and the higher universe where the two time frames meet and completely surrounds our universe in its bubble. Let's call the bubble a time differential boundary. The time differential boundary creates a massive distortion in space time because the fourth dimension of time is being stretched by the two hugely different time frames on each side of the boundary. This distortion in space time results in a gravity well so large that it affects everything in the two universes on either side of the boundary. The boundary isn't solid and doesn't physically exist, but the enormous gravity well it creates makes it behave as though it consists of very dense matter. This dense matter can be regarded as virtual matter, which can't exist anywhere else in either our or the upper universe. The magnitude of the gravity well causes all matter in the universe to fall towards the time differential boundary in free fall, causing the expansion of the universe to gradually accelerate over time. The virtual mass of the boundary is currently attributed to dark energy. Dark matter and dark energy have never actually been observed or detected, they have only existed in mathematics that works to explain the behavior of the observed universe. Some cosmologists now doubt the existence of dark matter and dark energy, and think that enlightened cosmologists of the future might look back and laugh. If it was possible to travel to the boundary, time would gradually slow down as you approached it. The curvature of space-time at a certain distance from the time differential boundary would be so large that, due to time dilation, it would cause time to stand still. Once time reaches a standstill, you could go no further, but in your own time frame, you would appear to be traveling towards it but never reach it, giving the impression that the universe ahead is infinite empty space. You couldn't see the boundary or beyond it because it doesn't emit, transmit, or reflect light. All you would see and experience is blackness going on and on forever. Now, if you imagine matter as being nothing but pure energy, and atomic particles not having any actual solidity, then according to Einstein, each particle would have a mass equal to its energy, divided by the speed of light squared.
This makes it easier to imagine that the solidity of matter isn't real, it results solely from the strong atomic force that tightly binds the energy particles together. As in some stars, the closer the energy particles become under their own gravity, the denser the material becomes. Now think again about the time differential boundary between our universe and the higher universe, and imagine that every elementary particle in our universe being universe is on the next level down, with the process working in exactly the same way. It would be wrong to say that every elementary particle contains a miniature universe, because the physics behind how it works is so bizarre we can't experience it in our everyday world. Time within the elementary particle bubble would be passing at a much slower rate than our time frame, so the same time differential boundary between each particle and our world creates its own local distortion in space-time. Although there are vast differences in the time frames in each universe level, the rate at which time passes, as experienced by the inhabitants of each universe level, will be exactly the same. The distortion in space-time created by the time differential boundary around each elementary particle is very very small but collectively with other particles, causes the distortion in space-time which along with the passage of time, we experience as normal gravity, governed by Newton's inverse square law. There can only be 17 types of universe bubbles with slightly different physical laws of nature. Those 17 different universal laws, including the speed of light constant and its associated time frame, interact with our universe and other universes differently and manifest themselves as the 17 elementary particles such as electrons, charm quarks and bosons. The universe bubbles that have physical laws similar to our universe will have a similar time frame. They might have a very faint time differential boundary, but the elementary particle in our world will have no measurable mass, such as a photon or gluon. Keep imagining all matter being just pure energy, with no actual solidity and you can easily imagine the universe levels extending forever, in each direction, like an infinite Russian doll. This is what Carl Sagan called, the, hierarchy of universes. Our entire universe, to the furthest galaxy we are told, is no more than a closed electron, in a far grander universe we can never see. And that universe is only an elementary particle in another still greater universe, and so on, forever. Also, every electron in our universe, it is claimed, is an entire miniature cosmos containing galaxies and stars and life and electrons. Every one of those electrons contains a still smaller universe, an infinite regression, up and down. This hypothesis cannot be substantiated by laboratory experiments, or modeled in existing earthbound mathematics. So considering Richard Feynman's words, we may never know for sure whether bizarre anomalies such as time differential boundaries actually exist. But the real truth is out there somewhere, and if the greatest minds can't explain why gravity happens, then the truth must be just as bizarre as this, if not more so. So the true reason why gravity exists may be destined to remain solely within the conceptual domain forever, and never be accepted as fact. Thank you for watching and sleep well. Coming up, in the next experiment in thought video, we will discuss the reasons why the time frames across the universe levels are so profoundly different.